Well, it's been a day or two since I've been here. Uh, some of you might uh, remember uh, Rick Britton. He's uh, the new missionary for this region. And uh, when I came 10 years ago, uh, that was the kind of position I had working with this association, Eastern Baptist Association, and Northeastern Baptist, and Santa Fe Baptist. And so when I got a call actually from Dr. Buds first, said, can you preach uh, on this Sunday? I said, I, I don't know. I'm supposed to help my wife in Sunday school. And my wife, who is, couldn't come because she is working in Sunday school, said, you go. And uh, so um, we flew into Albuquerque last night at 5.30, got home at 6.30, left about 7, drove to Las Vegas, spent the night, came up this morning. I'm really looking forward to coming and being with you, and I see many familiar faces, and it's a joy to be here. Uh, just, to, just to let you know something, um, most of this last year, I've been sitting where you were sitting. I'm uh, semi-retired now. I would like to be less retired, but that's the way it is. Um, and so this message this morning, uh, entitled, Are You Listening?, is from various uh, passages of Scripture, but it deals with the four major characters of the Nativity story. Mary, Martha, or Mary, and Joseph, uh, the shepherds and the wise men of the Magi. And uh, I shared earlier that, you know, when a preacher preaches, you know, he's pointing the finger at people. Like, I could point at your, your girls here pulling on your necklace while you were in the front row. <laughs> um, just tell you a story about that. Last week I was sitting in our worship service, and um, the pastor's son's the drummer. And then another guy that's a cut up plays the guitar. And I was being irreverent. Uh, I didn't close my eyes and nod my head while the pastor was praying. I was just kind of just meditating, and I, I happened to look up, and the guitarist stuck his tongue out at the pastor's son. <laughs> so after the service, I put my arm around him, and I said, um, do you uh, stick your tongue out at Cameron very often? And he was just totally embarrassed. So I, I embarrassed you, and I apologize. I shouldn't have done that. Are you listening is for me as much as you. I want you to know that. It's it been easier for me to pull out a sermon and a Christmas sermon. This is the first Sunday of Advent and, and preach that, and you wouldn't know the difference. But God has been doing something in my heart and, and literally asking me, are you listening? So I'd like to, to pray one more time, and uh, we'll just open the book, the, the, book, uh, the, book, the book of Luke. I'll tell you the scripture in just a second. And because uh, it's, I find myself when I'm sitting where you're sitting, to be thinking about dinner, and I just told we're going to Eklund to eat lunch, and I remember eating there. I didn't think about that. Or, you know, you, there's a hundred different things you could be thinking about. But I'm just going to ask you to, when I'm praying, in the next 15, 20, in my case, probably 40 minutes, just go how I preach. Um, are, are you listening to God this morning? Just, it's not hard out of seven days a week, if, if you want to, to take some time to let the Spirit speak to your heart, not man. You, if you hear only me, you're going to go and do whatever you want to do. But if you hear God this morning, there'll be something special. So let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your word. Lord, with great joy, I'm here this morning to be able to share with this wonderful church family. Uh, as I said, Lord, many familiar faces. I pray, Lord, your just blessings upon this church and this community, that your name might be honored and glorified. Your word tells us, Lord, clearly that if we trust you with all of our heart and do not lean on our own understanding, that you will direct our steps, guide our path. I pray, Lord, that that will happen. Your word also teaches us that, Lord, you do not send forth your word to come back to you empty and void, but that it might accomplish the purpose for which it has been sent. 
So I pray, O Lord, we will have ears to hear what you are trying to say today. And it will be transforming in our lives. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Before we look at the book of Luke, we're going to look at verses 26, chapter 1, verses 26 through 30. And that's just going to be a jumping off place. Oh, a Christian author by the name of Elizabeth Davis wrote a story back in 1949. That was a good year. That was the year I was born. Uh, but she tells a story about uh, a man named Herman uh, and his wife owned kind of a little general store in a community not too much different than Clayton. It was back in 49 and, and had a little bit of groceries, you know, a little bit of everything, a general store. And it was Christmas Eve, and they had uh, been busy all week, and they were tired. They closed later than normal and went home, uh, did what little bit they needed to do at home, and went to bed. Woke up the next morning uh, and uh, celebrated open gifts. Uh, they had a son named Tom, and uh, who was about 12, 13 years old and uh, just went through a traditional Christmas morning, just they and the husband and wife and the family and, and the boy Tom. And um, Herman said, after they had eaten some breakfast, I'm going back to bed, I'm tired. Tom went down the street to play with some friends and um, what was the wife's name? The wife's name, I don't remember. It's in the Western. Anyway, oh, Elizabeth. Her name was Elizabeth, also. Um, she said, um, okay, and it was just kind of, it's over and almost depressing. Worked hard, tired, and uh, so she uh, picked up the wrapping paper, washed the dishes, and, and uh, was just going to sit down and just kind of relax for a little bit. And she began to have this gnawing feeling in her spirit that she needed to go for a walk. And about that same time, it started to have some sleet and a little bit of snow mixed in. Uh, she could see on her, her temperature gauge, the temperature was dropping rapidly. And she said, that's crazy. But that gnawing feeling just not, would, would not go away. Um, so about an hour later, she went back and told her husband, said, I'm going to walk up to the store. And her husband said, that's crazy. So said, I, I know, but I cannot get over the fact that I need to, to go for a walk. Uh, so she headed down to the store. It was about three or four blocks away. And when she got to the store, there was two little boys at the front door looking around and one of the boys yelled, here she is, I told you she was going to come. And she looked at the boys, they were underdressed for the winter conditions. And so she quickly opened the door and, and ushered them inside the, the store and said, what are you boys doing out? You need to be home, it's too cold for you to be out. They didn't have scarves or gloves or stocking caps or anything. And she said... Now, one of the boys said, uh, my brother Jimmy did not get any Christmas presents, and we have three dollars, and we're coming to buy him some skates. And Elizabeth said, boys, just look around. We sold out of everything yesterday. We, we, we don't have anything. <coughs> and then she remembered something. Someone had bought uh, put a layaway from some skates and they never came to pick it up. And she, she just began to pray, God, make those skates the right size. She went back to the back, found the box, opened the box, brought it out, and had the little Jimmy try it on, and they fit perfectly.
And she said, no, I'm not going to do that. You take that $3 and when the, when the store opens up and you could get you some gloves and hat, you, you pay that $3 to get something for the winter. And she said to the boys, uh, why would you come out to buy skates? It, I don't understand why you do that. And the older boy said, I prayed, and God told me to come to the store today. And she said, you listen to God, and I listen to God, and something special happened today. She said, I, I floated, she said, the rest of the day, because I listened to God. I am sure, if you're a believer today, if you've trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that there are times in your life that beyond reason you listen to God and you obey God and something special happened. We're going to look at some characters out of Scripture this morning. And I, I think you're going to agree with me. When they listened to God and they obeyed God, something special happened. So let's look at some Scripture. If you have your Bibles open, Again, let's look at Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 30. Now, I'm reading this particular verse out of the New International Version. Here's what the Bible says. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, remember the story of, of Elizabeth, the mother of John the Baptist. Um, she couldn't have children, and God, uh, when her husband went into the temple, you know, the angel visited him and said, you're going to have a son. In the sixth month of her pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, to the town of Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, greetings, you who are highly favored. Now, I've never had an experience like that. I kind of guess that probably none of you have had an experience where an angel showed up and told you, guess what? You're going to have a baby. Okay. You are favored of God. The Lord is with you. And it says, Mary was greatly troubled. Ah. My guess is, if that happened to you and I, Greatly troubled would not explain what we were feeling at the moment. Anybody get an amen there? Amen. Okay. God shows up to an angel, to this young lady, not engaged but not married, who is, who is a righteous woman who has not had any kind of intimacy with her fiancé or anyone else, and says, you're going to have a baby. said to her, do not be afraid. You have found favor with God. Henry Blackaby in his famous book, Experiencing God, reminds us that God speaks to us in many different ways. He speaks through his word. He speaks in prayer. He speaks through other believers. Sometimes he speaks in, in the circumstances of life. He warns us in that book, though, that we need to test every experience to make sure it aligns with God's word. Now, I am convinced that Mary did not go back in her mind immediately to the prophet where it says that a virgin should conceive and the baby shall be called Emmanuel, God with us. But God had previously prophesied that, right? He had made the prophecy and now it came to Mary. If you have your Bibles or you just want to listen, in Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 and 19, it says, now the birth of Jesus took place in this way, when the mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they had come together, she was found to be with child by the Holy Spirit. Luke, right? We, we tracking on that? 
Now her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to be put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. Engagements at that time were not engagement like now. You probably heard other pastors or read in a Sunday school lesson about the details of that, but it was an engagement was just like a marriage, but it had not been completely come together through the ceremony and uh, and the honeymoon, for lack of a better word. Joseph finds out now Mary's pregnant. He's a righteous man, doesn't want to embarrass her, doesn't want to take her in front of the elders, and literally could have had her stoned to death. Her, his love for her was that great, so he decides to, to, to divorce her quietly and, and just marry you go your way. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appears to him in a dream. And so the first time, Mary has a little physical appearance of an angel. That word angel can be translated messenger, and we'll look at that a little bit later. Now the angel somehow mysteriously speaks to Joseph now in a dream and says to him, it's okay. This thing that has happened is of God. Angel speaks directly. Angel speaks through a dream. Are you listening? One of the things that amazes me is that I have never experienced, I've, I've had dreams. I can't always say that in those dreams I've clearly heard God speak. But I can tell you, last Sunday morning at 4 o'clock in the morning, the Lord woke me up. Now I get up at night periodically, just, just, I get up. But I woke up at 4 o'clock in the morning, and the Lord gave me, I believe, the Lord gave me two verses of Scripture. Now how do I know that was the Lord? I sensed it at the time. Last Sunday morning, my pastor preached on those two verses of Scripture. I had no clue that Pastor Matt was going to preach on this. After the service, I went up to Matt and said, Matt, I just need to tell you. He, he like I will do this morning, he invited people to respond. I decided to let other people come if they were going to come. But after the service, I went to Pastor Matt and said, God woke me up at 4 o'clock in the morning. Just let me know what you're going to be preaching on this morning. I, I've never experienced that before. But as I said to you earlier, I've been asking God, God, I want to hear you. I'm, I'm in this wilderness area of my life. I still want to preach. I still want to leave churches. I don't feel a call to do that full time, but I want to come in as an interim pastor to help churches. And I'm struggling, Lord. And he woke me up at 4 o'clock in the morning. Let me know, are you listening? And then Matt preaches on, are you listening? And then are you obeying? Our missionaries are telling us right now in the Middle East, among the Muslim people, one of the ways that they are experiencing God is through dreams. Let me, let me read some things from, from missionaries just to make sure that uh, my computer is not going to be there it is. In 2007, a missionary named Dudley Woodbury did a study among Muslim believers. He looked at 750 former Muslims who had been converted to, converted to Christ Many of them said one of the things that got their attention is that they had a dream about Jesus. Another mission magazine called Mission Frontier did a different study. 600 Muslims converts were studied. 25% of them had a dream that led to their conversion. The rest of the experience was they were genuinely loved by believers. They were introduced to the Bible by believers. They uh, were treated with respect and step by step brought them to faith in Christ. 
But in one study, 25% um, of them had a dream of Jesus, and that led to Christ. The Magi, the three wise men. Were there three wise men? Probably not. Probably several of them. We get that tradition because of the gold, frankincense, and myrrh. How did they come to know uh, Christ, and, and what, how did they listen to Christ? Remember the story? What, what was the thing that they followed? Star. Have you ever followed a star? You know, I don't, I don't, I don't even know where the North Star is. Somewhere in their tradition, going all the way back to Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Esther, and, and other people, the story of the a Messiah had circulated in their knowledge. And something happened in the heavenlies that caused them to say, this is the star of that one who's going to be born, King of the Jews, and they followed it. That's never been my experience. But the book of Romans, chapter 1, tells us that even the heavenlies declare the glory of God. So if you're seeking after truth, you're seeking after God, God has all kinds of ways to get your attention. And for the wise men or the magi, something happened out of their experience that says this star is going to lead me to that Christ child, to that Messiah, that one born the King of Jesus. How about the shepherds? Remember the story? It's found in Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 11. They're out, hanging out at night, watching their sheep, right? Remember the story? How many remember the story? So they're out on the hillside, and suddenly, first an angel comes. What was the first thing he said to them? Don't be afraid. Again, I don't know about you, but if I'm sit, hanging out at night, doing my thing, and all of a sudden an angel shows up, first thing I'm going to do is be afraid. Don't be afraid. For I have good news for you. Today in the city of Bethlehem, a Savior is born who is Christ the King. And then suddenly the whole heavenly host began rejoicing. Are you listening? How does God speak to you? Serious question. How does God speak to you? When's the last time that God did speak to you? For me personally, most often is in my quiet time when I'm reading scripture and I have a heart who says, God, I want you to speak to me today. On the way from uh, Albuquerque or Rio Rancho to Las Vegas last night, I was looking for any kind of station that would have a clear signal. And I found one where someone was preaching. Uh, well, it was a Christian station, and someone was doing a, a minute devotional. And they said they were reading through the scripture, and they were in a certain book of the Bible. And all the way through that chapter, they said, he, he kept on saying, is there something here, something here for me today? And it was in that particular book of the Bible, in the Chronicles, where it's just listing genealogies and cities. And, and he, he just said, there's nothing here for me. And then he said, except for the last verse. And the last verse gave me a promise to hold it. When's the last time God spoke to you? Where was it when God spoke to you? What did he say to you? Are you listening? I think it's very important when the scripture says, those who have ears to hear, let them hear what the Spirit says. Now, how many of you have an iPad, iPhone, anything like that? Okay. I look at Facebook beginning today. I'm taking an Advent Facebook fast. I'm not going to look at Facebook until after Christmas. That's for me. I'm not saying it's for you. But you know what's amazing on Facebook? If I will do a search on a particular topic, 
there'll be a commercial and advertisement in Facebook on that. My phone saves where I have been. And somehow, and if I do a Google search, same thing. There'll be advertisements in the side, and it'll be a point for its, I'll give you an example. My wife and I are looking to sell my car and her car and buy a new Honda CRV. Okay? We don't need, I've got a Ford truck, we don't need three vehicles for two of us. So when I open up Google or if I open up Facebook, they will be not always Honda, but there will be an automobile advertisement somewhere. Have you had that experience? Safety, safety searches. When you are seeking to find God, He's going to open up through the Word, through prayer, through something a preacher says or someone in the body of Christ says, or even circumstances like waking up last Sunday at four o'clock in the morning. If you want to find God, He will find you, and He will tell you what He's all about. So let's go back through those four stories. Mary, a righteous woman. The angel appears to her and says, God is with you. You are favored. Fast forward, tells her what is going to happen. You're going to be with child. She says, that's not happening. God, by His grace, is going to overshadow you, and you'll be with the child. Remember what she says? King James Version, let it be unto me as you have said. God speaks, and she says, I want your will in my life. I will obey. Joseph, Ready to put away Mary. The angel shows up in a dream and says, there is something special about to happen in your life. God has entrusted you to be the father of the Messiah. What did Joseph do? Remember? He went and took Mary as his wife. The Magi see a star. I don't know how it happened, but they come to understand that this star represents the Messiah, the Christ child. And what does it say they do? They left where they were to come to worship. What do the shepherds do? The angel comes, the group comes, says, Behold, in Jerusalem, a child has been born who is Christ the Lord, the Savior. What did they do? They went to see if these things might be true. Um, you said you studied James last time. Finish James in your Bible study. <coughs> James says, don't be hearers only, but be doers of the word. When is the last time God spoke to you? What did he tell you? For some of you, it might be, hey, Let's just be really honest. You're coming to church, but you're not acting like a Christian the other six days of the week. How do I know that's true? Because God loves you enough. He will not let you be comfortable with your sin. How do I know that's true? I've lost count of the number of times that God has said to me, hey, you're a preacher, you're a preacher's kid, you say you're a Christian, thoughts and your behaviors don't line up holiness. And I could ignore that part of my heart or I could humble myself and say God forgive me and I'll repent. Some of you are maybe not even a Christian at all. How do I know that's true? Because week after week year after year on any given Sunday someone will be in a church service and the Spirit of God will come to say, you're, you're faking. You might be unbaptized. You might have gone through Sunday school. 
but you really have not trusted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? Are you listening? Maybe God has called you to teach a Sunday school class or go to a mission project or something like that. And you've got excuse after excuse after excuse. But you know in your heart that God has spoken. But it's one thing to hear. It's another thing to be a doer of the word. And not a hearer of the Why am I saying that? As I said in the very beginning, I'm trying to closely listen to God. Not because I'm a preacher. Not because I went to seminary. Because I have a hunger and desire to finish strong in my life for Christ. I want to do the things that bring honor and glory to Him. I want to be able one day, when I stand before Him, that He will say to me, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. And he's not just saying that to me. He's saying that to you. Whether you're a youth, or older, or grayer, or balder, he wants all of us to finish strong. And God still speaks. Let me close. The computer shut up again. I don't know why I started doing this. Um, I started putting my sermons on my mind. Let me tell you a story, and then another quote from Henry Blackaby, and then we'll be dismissed. There's a farmer, way back in the day when they had mules to run the, the stuff on the farm. And uh, he had a mule, and uh, he was wanting to sell that mule. And so he put an advertisement in a paper that was circulated around the region, and um, a couple weeks later, somebody from another community came over, and another farmer was looking for a mule, and so he, he, uh, they started chit-chatting back and forth, and then the other farmer said, uh, well, tell me about this mule you have for sale. Okay, he said, is it a good mule? It's a good mule, it will work a day. It, it'll do what you ask it to do. It's a strong, uh, healthy mule and it will plow and it will, it will do what you want it to do. He said, but will it obey when I tell it to do? Yeah, it will, it's a, it's a good mule. And so I said, well, let's, let's hitch it up and let's, let's try it out. Well, the farmer got the harnesses and all this, whatever goes on, the mule would work and uh, got it to the field and uh, hand the reins to the other farmer who wanted to buy it and the farmer said, giddy up. And the mule didn't do a thing. And he looked at the other farmer and said, I thought you said it obeys. Well, give me a second. Went over, grabbed a two by four, whacked it on top of the head, and said, sometimes you have to get the mule's attention. Try again. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I know about me. And I know what scripture says. It warns us about being stubborn, about being hard-hearted. And sometimes God brings things into our lives not to hurt us, but to get our attention. I just got back from California and talking to my older son, and, and he's a youth pastor out there, and he, he didn't know what I was preaching on, but he, on his own, said, Dad, you were very patient with me because there's sometimes I put you to the test. I said, well, that's probably true. Sometimes I know I frustrated you. But he said, you know, Dad, it's the difficulties in my life that has caused me to say, I can't do this on my own. I need help. And that's and out of that brokenness is when God speaks to me. I know that's when he speaks to me, too. I, I don't know who you are. I, I honestly don't. I've watched you over the years, uh, tenants higher, tenants lower, same faces, different faces. But here's what I know. Our country is in a very difficult place. And we look to politicians to solve the problems. But my Bible says, if my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves, 
and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. I will heal their land and forgive their sin. Forgive their sin. My passion is to walk alongside churches and open the Word of God and ask them a simple question. Are you listening? Do you have a desire, a hunger and thirst to hear from God? And then when you do hear from Him, will you obey? I want you to bow your heads, would you? Every head bowed, every eye closed. Even though I just confessed to the three girls up front that I didn't do that last week. Let me ask you a couple of questions in closing. Do you honestly have a heart to want to hear the voice of God? Not just be religious, not just come to church and check that off and say, I'll do whatever I want to do this week. But do you have a desire to hear God and let Him speak to your heart? Words of comfort, words of encouragement, words of wisdom. If you don't, just take a second and just talk to God privately. And say, give me that heart to have ears to hear what the Spirit is saying. Second question. When was the last time that God spoke to you and what did he say? the last time that God spoke to you, what did he say? And how are you doing on the obedience part of it? It's only in obedience that we experience the presence of God, the power of God, the pleasure of God. And I will tell you, when you've been to that place, in obedience, and you have experienced, not just intellectually, not just theologically, but personally, the presence of God, the power of God, the pleasure of God. There is nothing on this planet Earth that will compare to the joy of that experience. Father God in heaven, as these your people wait before you today. I just pray, Lord, that they will be reminded this Christmas season of these four major characters, and if you include Jesus, five major characters. When you spoke, sometimes they were startled, sometimes they were afraid, sometimes they, they worked through in their own experience a clarification to know that it was you who spoke. But when they knew it was you, they obeyed. And out of those acts of obedience, they experienced you in ways, in their case, that literally changed the world. I just pray, Father, for me, first of all, for these who have been there, that you will not give up on us in our stubbornness and our hard hardness. You will not give up on us when we have our own agendas and want our own pleasures. That you would continue to speak, humble us, and give us opportunities more to hear you and obey you. I pray these things in Jesus' name. <laughs> My guess is that the choir is going to come soon. No, no. Okay. I'm guessing wrong. <laughs> But I know you have a good pianist, and even if the organist wants to come, but listen, if the pianist will come up and just play, and you can play anything you want. Okay, the organist can come play anything you want. <laughs> Open the book and just whatever God leads. When I was nine years old, probably a church smaller, but much like you, my dad was the pastor, by vocational pastor. It was a Sunday night, and he said, well, we're just home 
folk, and literally most of them were my aunts and uncles and people have been in church for a while. Let's just have a word of prayer and go. But that was the that was the evening that God was speaking to me to give my life to Him as my Lord and Savior. And I made a promise when I went into the ministry, I would not leave a service without giving people, if they heard God speak, a chance to respond. And you might not want to come forward. You might have friends, or I'll be here for a while if you want to come talk with me and pray with me. But if you've heard God speak, if you're not a believer, but you've heard God say, trust me today, I will transform your life. Or if you're a believer, you're not walking close to the Lord, and he's saying, you and I both know where you are. Recommit yourself to his lordship. He will do that today. If you want to just come and fill these things, if if there's heartache in your family, hurt in your family, uh, come to pray for your pastor. You know, I know Billy, I know Kyle, I've only talked to Mark on the phone. And you just feel led this Christmas season to pray for your pastor. I, I don't know what it is, but I, I don't want you to leave today if you've heard God speak without giving you a chance to obey. So let's stand together and uh, I'll be here. We won't, we'll just go through one verse, okay? Someone comes, we'll just continue to play. But we want you to say yes to God. He's talking to you today. Just come. If you ever watch Billy Graham, he says, come down. Come down the aisle. If you need to come. You know, that song is just as I am.